Hello everyone, this is uh, David here. So today I'm presenting array configurable processing in low power DSPs, digital signal processing. Actually, um, since the beginning of this quarter, this is my third presentation on energy efficient protocols and mechanisms for um, supporting low, low power programmable devices such as um, um, digital signal processing and uh, mobile computing systems. So the Google problem, here we have a computer, this is actually my Sony Bio computer, I call it Robocom. It's just the name that I adopted for it. And uh, its mission is to be launched to the moon. Part of the first mission is to acquire lunar samples from the moon, such as, you know, acoustic signals, oxygen, hydrological samples, and soil samples. And the mission two is to process the data on the fly. Let's see how to do this. So I disintegrate all the logic components from my laptop and through adaptive computing system and rapid reconfiguration, a robot is born and so it's ready to be launched to the moon. So basically this is the challenge a lot of people face, designers in the industry today, on how to adapt the system to suit the particular need. So let's look at the acoustic subsystem, which is the sound system. Alright, here we have an MP3 audio system. This is part of the acoustic subsystem, and as you can see, we have sound being recorded. And this is part of the ADC, and onto the DSP, the, the signal is processed, same to the memory, and then it's taken back to DSP, it's processed from, you can buy the digital back to analog, and it's played back. Uh, pay attention to the blue uh, block diagram, DSP and memory. Those are the digital block. That is where actually you can find ways to uh, reduce power in the whole system. But I'm sure a lot of people talked about memory design and how to reduce the power. But I'm going to be talking about the memory, I mean, um, power reduction on just the DSP block alone. So before we can reduce energy in this device, we have to look at the internal architecture of the DSP block to see how we can efficiently design a system that can reduce power in it. So our system requires uh, these requirements. A fast sampling system that can take this sound system into the whole unit in a real-time way to play back the system without any delays. And the system should be able to support a lot of standards including MP3, WAC, and uh, WAV. And then the basic challenge here is how do you keep this system low power because you don't want the robot to you know, lose power in the moment. So let's see how to do this. Basically, this is nothing new. We're sure a lot of people have, we all know the basic architecture of a, of a microprocessor. This represents the Harvard architecture, von Neumann architecture, I beg your pardon, where memory and program data are separated. And um, as you can see, all of these things are just slightly coupled. There's really no way we can redesign the block. Everything is straight from the manufacturer, and so this system might not be suitable if we have to reduce power and dissipation on the DSP chip. So what is left so far is we're going to be talking about solutions to low power processing. Uh, I'm also going to present the technique that the authors used in their paper. Uh, I'm going to give a few experimental examples that were presented, finally, completion and future work. And then eventually, we'll do a mission analysis to see if our robot is successful in this mission one or two. A lot of solutions we have proposed in the past work by different authors. These four approaches were sort of okay, they kind of, they kind of worked out, but None of these systems was 100% reconfigurable. And so the solution proposed by the authors in these papers was a reconfigurable architecture that provides dynamic scheduling of the hardware system. And so this hardware system can be reconfigured to suit the particular task that needs to be done. How this is done is that the functional units have to be sort of recreated to match what task that needs to be done at any particular point in time. And then those functions that are not needed to be run Functions that are not needed to run the system are disconnected, and that way you can save power. But how do you define a good matching system? A system that can fully describe the computational complexity is quite a challenge. And so that takes us to that takes us to the concept of granular, granularity in programming model. This is basically the driving force behind the um, the, the uh, proposal by the authors. The programming model defines the level of system reconfiguration that can be done to fit a particular task. So if you can reconfigure the system to fit the task you want to run, 
that they can have a good energy saving device. One key concept is granularity. Uh, the authors really didn't define this concept here, but I came up with this idea based on research that I did that is the digital composition of the building blocks that make up the, the functional units, both structurally and electrically. And here you can see a graph that models the exact behavior of the computational complexity against energy utilization and granularity. And as you can see, as the granularity is increasing, the energy utilization is also rising. So this is our task here. We're trying to map, sort of adjust the tax to, a, to an optimal level whereby um, as a tax, I'm sorry, to a level whereby the level whereby the tax uh, can match the the functionality that is needed without causing a lot of energy. I'll just run through these files. They proposed uh, a couple of uh, models. The two extremes are the stored program model and the gate level model. The stored program level model has zero level of reconfiguration. This cannot be reconfigured in any way. And then the last two are sort of in between the previous two. And so we're going to adopt the data path model for this design of the DSP. Several power reduction techniques that were proposed by these authors included operating at low voltage and frequency. And as you know, power is related to these two. And capacitive load is nothing really we can do about that because it's straight from the manufacturer, whichever DS features we choose to use. But this is not a very good technique. And so this is preferred. Reducing the energy waste on the modules. This is done by using modules that are application specific. And to do this, we have to make sure we preserve the locality and the distribution of the several functional units in the system, and we have to make sure we use energy on demand. We don't use the units that are not needed to run a tax. And we have to also avoid multiplexing of the data lines, as well as the bus units. Somebody talked about bus units and bandwidth and energy utilization. So you have to avoid extensive use of multiplexing in those functional units. So here we have uh, the, our tax again, and as you see, again, as you move away or move towards a higher level of granularity, the energy utilization increases. So the main part here is to sort of map our program or our tax onto a level of programming domain that will not consume a lot of energy. And how do you do this? How do you maintain programmability and still have a tax? The application specific is like you're trying to be here and on the center and trying to be here. How is that possible? This is a very big, big challenge and it's, it's a very big challenge in the industry today faced by a lot of designers. And as you can see, as you move towards a high level of flexibility, the power utilization is very low. Take note that this is reciprocal of power utilization and uh, energy efficiency. And the template is used to map the, uh, the task. I'm going to skip this very quickly. And then back to our uh, design. Uh, this is not suitable, as you know. We cannot use this system. And so we trash it and use one of the models described. And this allows us to have a level of parallelism we can have multiple of these. And then this, this gives us to a high level of concurrency, so we have to make sure we have an optimal level of the task. And as we move towards the high level of concurrency, the energy utilization gets to the point whereby energy still it goes up, and so we have to maintain our, an optimal level, which is indicated by the vertical line you see there. And so one of the examples that was used by the authors was a voice coder processor, and this gave an outstanding result of 5.70 Gaussian operations per watt. Uh, example two was not successful at all because the high performance correlator that was proposed by the CDMA based band uh, did not provide enough performance to run the system on an FPGA, for instance. But somebody proposed, um, Nasila by name proposed a solution to this. And so in conclusion, to maintain the granularity and energy efficiency, as well as power utilization, there has to be a lot of matching and a lot of trade-offs. And so I think a lot of research still needs to be done in this area. And finally, it looks like our robot makes a good landing.